<laughs> In there somewhere. Try it again. you're all doing well or good afternoon good evening morning for me as you may have been able to tell from my probably batting 80 percent on that one but uh there's a little bit of banish misfortune one of the hardest tune names for me to say banish misfortune kind of a tongue twister but welcome to another mando lessons live my name is baron collins hill looking forward to spending the hour with you uh, we got folks from all over already chiming in. Great to see you all. Let me know in the chat if this is your first time. Let me know if this is your 102nd time. I know there's some of you out there. Uh, but great to see you all. We got Dan, Ursinoth, uh, Lewis, Robert, Stephen, Cassidy, Edward, Sheldon, Jim, Betsy, Joan, Julia, Oscar. Amazing. Great to see you all here. Hope you're all doing well this fine Saturday. That tune I started with, Banish Misfortune, is the jam tune of the day. So if uh, you stick around till the end, we'll play that tune together. Always fun. It's also available on my website to learn, uh, mandolessons.com. All right, how you all doing? Let me know in the chat if there's any uh, highlights. You got a couple already. Betsy said, hello from Nashville. Got my Had my first in-practice, or <laughs> in-person, did I mention that I... My brain's a little fried this morning. In-person practice at my house this uh, Thursday with a local Irish traditional music friend. Another to happen today with him and a bluegrass friend. Awesome. Yeah, things are starting to open up. I've had a couple sessions in my house as well, getting getting folks together and playing tunes. Part of why I am stumbling this morning is I was up till 12.30 last night playing Irish tunes. So... There you have it. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to be making music with people again. It's long overdue. Ersana says, I swear that tune is next on my agenda to learn. I swear it's next on my agenda to relearn. <laughs> Couldn't quite get it out all the way uh, every time. And I like Lewis's approach, which seems just think of it as melodic variation. <laughs> Where is the line between melodic variation and not knowing the tune? That's trade secrets. <laughs> uh, Oscar, good to have you here, says you should check out a fiddle tune called Cajun Fiddle. Or Fidel, maybe fiddle, just a <laughs> hard to say. That's an interesting idea. By Don Rich. Uh, it would fit the style on the mandolin. Cool, yeah. Okay, and then <laughs> uh, corrected to fiddle. Uh, Cajun Fidel would be a, an interesting, <laughs> different thing. Uh, Woody, good to have you. William, awesome. All right, well, if you're new here, the way this works is it's an hour of pretty much Q&A. So 
anything you are working on, you got questions about, music related, mandolin related, sometimes we just go off on tangents that are not music related or anything. Sometimes we just sit here while I try to remember how tunes go. If you got any tunes you'd like me to butcher on the live stream, by all means, throw them in the chat. And if I at least know uh, today, I'll say 75. If I know 75% of the tune, I'll give it a shot. I'm, I'm feeling adventurous. <laughs> um, but keep the questions coming. No question is too simple. No question is too advanced. They're all fair game. Uh, love hanging out with you all for the hour. And let's, uh, let's jump into it. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm a little scattered. I think I'm all caught up. Got folks from all around. Germany, Barcelona, Georgia, Minnesota, California, UK, Ontario. Amazing. All right. Oh yeah, Lewis says we saw uh, so yeah, last weekend we had uh, the patron only live stream. So anyone who supports me on Patreon at five dollars a month or more, we do a little patron only live stream that are a little more chill. And I uh, got my partner Emma to come in, and we played some fiddle and mandolin duets, which is always fun. Uh, by special request, the the chat wanted Emma to join in, so that was super fun. Hopefully, we'll do it again. Nice, Arsenas and friends are vexed and. Actually learning to play is concertina. Yeah Concertina is super fun. I wish I could play concertina um. <laughs> No problem Oscar. It's uh, I'm American and also not good at spelling <laughs> Ooh, Ant-Man's got a great question picking pattern for a slip jig That is a great idea, and then I'll play some St. Anne's reel uh, so it's actually the same as your non-slip jig, your stuck jig, <laughs> or just a regular jig. Uh, so it's the same down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. But you take out the, the space there and you get down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. One, two, three, four, five, six is a regular jig, but you just need to do that kind of three, three in a row of those little down, up, down patterns gives you the slip jig which is in nine eight so a slip jig goes one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine and the picking pattern one uh down up down down up down down up down up down down up down down up down up down down up down down up down up uh uh here's a is it fair-haired canavans which I'm probably saying very incorrectly, or the fair-haired Canavan's uh, Irish slip jig. So it's got that, I think of slip jigs, I, I kind of already said this, but regular, I think maybe called double jigs usually. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the slip jig. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so uh, the butterfly. The, so I picked one, uh, Farad Canavans is actually uh, is a, a little notier. The I think the thing with that can really help you with the pick direction, especially on a tune like The Butterfly that's got a lot more space. Is to actually, I've talked about this in the past, but pretty much turn every note that's, an eight, uh, that's a quarter note or a... Um, a longer note than a straight eighth note. So straight eighth notes in 
in slip jig pattern would be one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. But that's not what's happening in uh, the butterfly. It's super spacious. So I think the, the way to get that proper pick direction under your fingers is to turn that all those spaces into eighth notes. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard time. I should work on this. It's a hard one to do it too. And that will get your right hand getting in that pattern, and then you can keep that pattern going and take out all those extra notes. And what do you actually end up in this case is a lot of downstroke. So it becomes down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. So because it's all these short notes, you really end up with a lot of uh, kind of down, it's, it's really down heavy. Because da, 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 da. Uh, you, you end up with a lot of, you end up in this sort of rhythmic pattern of down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, down. Let's all do that together. It's a really good uh, thing to practice. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, down. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, down. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, down. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 up, down. So that's sort of the overarching rhythmic idea behind that that slip jig, the butterfly, uh, much more open than which is much more of that down up down down up down down up down. Um, there's a little deep dive into the butterfly and the slip jig patterns. All right, so there was a request for Saint Anne's reel. I think I can play that.
variant again on there <laughs> all right let's see what program do you use to write tabs and scores i use a program called muse score m-u-s-e-s-c-o-r-e -E. it's open source it's free it's multi-platform it's great um you know it's not you can do a lot of really complicated stuff with it i my guess is it's not quite as uh, full featured as something like sibelius or finale um which are sort of like industry standards but those are really expensive programs and for writing out fiddle tunes i i had sibelius or finale for a little while like 10 years ago but uh muse score does more than more than enough for me so that's that's what i use um and it's free so go pick go download it and uh see if see if you can get your fingers around it if a diatonic tune, a question from James, is one which sticks to the scale, if I heard that right, what is the opposite? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, maybe chromatic or non-diatonic or... I would say uh, that's, that's a good question. Like diatonic is within that scale. And if you have notes outside of that scale, then maybe it's non-diatonic or chromatic like once you're not playing a diatonic scale you're kind of getting into chromatic territory uh that's a good question i don't know exactly what the proper if there is like a proper name for it uh james says in my local local music shop Steve and Tyler of Aerosmith came in for a concertina, a new folk trick. Wow, I would love to see Steve and Tyler play concertina. That would be amazing. Yeah, we need more uh, arena rock concertina. Uh, you know, get, get a little distortion on there and uh, maybe a wah-wah pedal. And, ooh, sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Andy, good to have you here says finally attended the session excellent in st paul last night didn't get to open the case but they played a few songs i knew next time need to check out their 2021 common tunes list that's the thing to do anytime i go to a new session sometimes i don't even bring a mandolin sometimes I, if it's like a session in a bar i'll just go and sit at the bar or sit near the musicians and just like yeah give a listen hear what sort of tunes they're playing see if it's something i'm into and then next time i'll i'll bring a case if it's, it seems like something i want to join into and Pull out the mandolin, see if they're into that. Um, yes, it's, it's finally starting to happen. Uh, yeah, and sometimes they'll have tune lists, which is also great. Um, I'm about to make a, I want to make a lesson. I just found an amazing resource. I'll just tell you guys about it now. So Cultus, which is, and maybe somebody from Ireland can make a better explanation of this. It's like the Irish government, uh, traditional music um like kind of organization called cultus and i can't remember how to spell it but it doesn't look like it's cultus from uh american standards but um they put out some amazing r r r uh, recordings that i just found there's three volumes of people sitting around playing really classic irish tunes so if you're into irish music I'll make this lesson and I'll put the links to it, but I just found it's on Apple Music. Uh, it's called like Fin Session, F O I N N S E S I U N, something like that. There's three volumes. Each volume is like the equivalent of two what would have been CDs back in the day. Maybe you can still get them on CD, uh, but it's like a hundred. Each volume is like a hundred and twenty different tunes um 
and like two hours worth of music. So in all, you've got like 350 tunes, six hours of music. They're all classic tunes. Like listening through, I don't know them all, but a lot of these tunes are like, oh yeah, these are just all classics that I've heard over and over again over the years. And I've just been having fun sitting down. They go fast. That's the only thing. Um, so definitely a good excuse to use a slow downer because they're playing right up at speed. You know, if they played uh, Miss Monahan's, they'd be going. But um, I think if anyone is like wants to get into Irish session traditional music, listen to these recordings. They're really great to listen to. It's like a full little session band. Um, they're nice. It's a nice combination. They're not really like slow and skeletal versions of the tune. It sounds like people sitting around in a bar and playing music, um, which is really nice. Just put them on in the background, listen to the tunes, um, and then see if you can pick some up. I think even just the act of listening, you know, if you listen to one of these volumes a day for like a month, and then pulled out your mandolin and just like tried to play along, slow them down to 50% speed or 75% speed. That's like a lifetime's worth of, you get, you know, if you learn every tune off those albums, they're all classics. That's like 350 tunes. Woo, you're in good shape. But, um, you know, even just like having them in your head, you're going to hear these tunes at sessions all the time. I'm going to make a whole lesson about it. It's going to be great. But uh, that was tangentially connected to something. Oh, yeah, Andy Zan that he went to a session in St. Paul. That's my little Irish tip of the week. I'll I'll make a lesson on that and give you all the links and stuff. Yeah, so the 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 the, the slip jig picking, all that space definitely does. That's like I've trained my right hand enough that if it's a tune of straight eighth notes, I'm right on and I can just do the right thing. But even you know, me, someone who teach who like <laughs> preaches right hand uh patterns and sort of like the formulas I get a little thrown off sometimes too when there's so much space because it's like oh what what where is this falling in the measure is this an up is it a down what's going on um so filling those in is a good exercise anyone checked out Paul Hardy's ABC sessions it's got hundreds of mandolin and guitar tabs in folk and Irish tradition oh I gotta check those out sounds great I'm all for Stephen if you want Send me e an email, mandolessons at mandolessons.com. I've got a section on my website that's sort of like resources for learning tunes. I would love to add that to it um, and take a look at it. And I know my brain won't remember itself. So if you feel like it, shoot me an email with that uh, resource and I'll put it up on the website. Jones says, filling spaces, repeating notes, help me be familiar, playing up, down, and not cross-picking directions. In, yeah, in usual 4-4 four, four time. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything you can do to train your hands to get into those picking pattern formulas is going to be huge. Um, and really, it just makes it so you don't have to... You don't have to think about it anymore. You play enough tunes with like down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. And you get that in your head. It makes learning tunes easier because you're not saying like, okay, what's the melody and what's my picking direction? The picking direction is on autopilot. And it's just like, all you have to do now is think about the melody. Everything feels more natural. It's all win-win. Oh, no, no, no. I'm all for... There's lots of great... I mean, I learned to play mandolin from just scouring the internet myself, so I'm all for sharing the knowledge of all the great resources out there. <laughs> the, the drug... And, yeah, I got a bit of a bobblehead when I get, uh, get into a tune. <laughs> Ooh, Andy. Combination of Super Chat. Thank you so much for the support uh there's a bunch of different ways to support you can do uh for anyone interested there's super chats here on youtube which i don't know a whole lot about but i appreciate them um and then there's also links in the description if you'd rather support via paypal or patreon there's a bunch of patrons in the chat including andrew so thank you for the the doubling up um but he has a great question can you explain the difference between playing a jig and a slide 
Yes, I can. So slides are technically in 12, eight. Um, so here, uh, so yeah, it's, it's uh, mostly, don't worry too much about like what time signature it's in. You just gotta get the feel of it. So maybe I'll try to play a tune. How does old favorite go? Okay, that's good. So I think I've seen Old Favorite uh, played both as a jig and as a slide. I don't know which, uh, which it like if there's one that's more like right than the other. But I think most people will really play it, at least in the, the American music scenes that I frequent, play it more as a jig. Um, but I have heard it played as a slide. So the tune as a jig sounds like this. And then as a slide for the, the sonic difference, kind of what your ear picks up on would be. Back to jig. So jigs are a little smoother. I mean, the ultimate difference is they're both different kinds of dance, traditional dance. So a jig is a kind of dance and a slide is a kind of dance. Uh, musically, there's an em there's a certain emphasis that goes into a slide. A dun -ga -da -ga -da -dun -da -da Got a little it's a little more insistent so a jig might be like one two three four five six one two three four five six with only the strong beat on one one two three four five six one two and a slide maybe one two three and there's certain kind of like in the butterfly where you have like It's, it's got a little more space. Sometimes slides are a little more spacious. And, you know, rather than going... very flowy, the slide version might be... a little more punchy. It's got a little bit more space. The phrases have kind of been simplified down in a little bit that simultaneously allows you to play it a little faster and also just gives it a little more insistent dunga dunga dum ba dum ba dum beat to it. So there's my uh, two cents on jigs and slides. Hopefully that's helpful. How to think about phrasing for impro improvising. Great question from Steven. That's a huge topic. Um, you know, I think... I want, I want to make some lessons on this because it's, it's sort of next up in my improvisation series, which I've been working on. And so far, I've really been kind of like looking into the nuts and bolts and, uh, you know, theory and uh, different techniques and different ideas about arpeggios and landing notes and scales and things like that. It's all very sort of like technical. But then once you get into things like, uh, you know, phrasing, 
for improvisation. That's a much more kind of uh, vague, uh, it's not quite the word I'm looking for, but uh, it's less concrete of a, uh, uh, a skill. And I think, you know, it really kind of boils down to a lot more listening where, um, you know, you listen to how your heroes are phrasing things. You can take inspiration from the melody itself. So like whiskey before breakfast. I mean, also just thinking maybe to back up a little bit, kind of connected to like the jig versus slide conversation. Like there's so many different ways that you can play a tune. Like you can play a really hyped up version of Whiskey Before Breakfast where you're going. can play something really mellow and slow and spacious. You know, it's got a lot more space. Um, it's less double stop heavy and it's just a different feeling. So I think the first step is really get comfortable with the, the groove and that will do a lot to kind of inform where your phrasing is gonna come from. Cause if, you know, if we have a really rocking version of uh, Whiskey Before Breakfast and then I play something kind of mellowly phrased, it's just gonna clash. Like if I'm going, uh, Yeah, put all this kind of like wishy-washy feel over it. It's just gonna be like, whoa, that doesn't quite line up with the tune. Um, so you can draw your phrasing from more energetic and kind of raucous ideas. I would say it's a lot of listening. It's a lot of understanding the groove that you're coming from uh, or that's being played kind of underneath whatever you're improvising or varying. Um, yeah, I would say those are kind of the two big things. Don't be afraid to leave a bunch of space and also just time in the seat with a mandolin in your hands, trying to improvise, you know, just like make a lot of mistakes, a lot of trial and error, like make it so spacious and so strangely phrased that you totally lose your place and you have to stop the tune and start over. Um, and then sometimes, you know, force yourself to play along with a recording where they're not going to stop for you. So you got to just like, whatever you do, you got to get back on the train one way or another. It's a messy process, but uh, the nice thing about music is if you make a mess, you don't have to clean it up at the end. <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, great, great question though. All right, Jim says, does music, music score play back? It will play back. Yes. Uh, Steven says I use Guitar Pro. It can write any instrument tab. Nice. Yep, MuseScore will do the same thing. I usually write it out in standard notation, but then you can um, just like copy and paste it in mandolin tab, guitar tab, you name it tab. Different like levels of complex. Tab isn't as standardized as standard notation. Um, so there, it's sort of like how much information do you want in your tablature? I think I usually go for like medium amount of information uh kind of a good combination of clean but also giving you a little more rhythmic the kind of the downfall of tab is you don't have rhythmic values associated with the number so often you'll see little and on, on my lessons you'll see little like lines below the tablature and those are giving you rhythmic information because if I, I grew up just looking at tab that was just numbers and like you can space them out but you don't actually there's no visual rhythmic information within the number itself. So if it says like five on the A string, it doesn't say how long to play it. Um, so you need to either like count how it's spaced out in the measure, which can work sometimes, but uh, also it can be a little, a little vague or you can add some more information below the tablature itself. 
Hey, Groid, good to have you here. Ant-Man says you'll love watching Chris Thiele. Yeah, he's a, he's the one true bobblehead. Lewis says I went to an all-genre jam in New Harmony, Indiana. Played St. Anne's, Pigfoot, Swallowtail, and Blarney Pilgrim. Yeah, it's great to, you know, as much as I love a good old-time specific jam or a good Irish session, I also love a good mixed genre. Anything goes jam. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, nice. So yeah, Jonah has some good information. There's a couple of ways to be. If you're not, we we're talking about like if you're not diatonic, what is it? Um, and Jonah's saying changing from one diatonic scale to another is one way, uh, or like blues scale. Yeah, there's. It's sort of like going from major to minor. Like there are multiple kinds of minor. Um, so, like, uh, maybe it's a little too confusing of a, uh, uh, a, uh, yeah, cultist, I can't even say, yeah, so, all right, Geroid's right, got all the information on that. So, I don't know if you were here when I was originally talking about it, uh, Geroid, but I just found this, this three album set of, uh, session tunes, classic session tunes from Cultus. Um, and th that's that's what Geroid is now spelling that I could not spell if my life depended on it. I, I don't know how to say the middle word. Cultus something Aaron. And so that's the Irish, um, as I was explaining earlier, kind of maybe you can be uh, either back me up on it, Geroid, or inform me better that it's some government organization just sort of like supporting um and teaching uh traditional irish music um and sort of creating s syllabuses for people to learn to play music and getting getting kids playing music and all that sort of stuff anyway i was saying Geroid, that i don't know if you're here when i was talking about it i found some great uh albums of classic session tunes that end up being like 350 tunes over the course of six hours and six cds worth of music that uh is a, an amazing resource that i want to make a lesson on oscar has a question uh i've been playing fingerstyle guitar for a long time travis picking and when i started playing mandolin i used the same technique i was wondering if there's there are more ways to play it there definitely are i i mean I tend to not finger pick just because the, the scale length is so short and the strings like it, the strings have a certain like a lot more tension on them than uh, like a single strung six string guitar like you can do but it's always comes out kind of quiet you could try it with finger picks I mean ultimately there are no rules so if you get into finger picking mandolin, that's cool. I would like make your mark that way. I think it's a great idea. And then you'll see people do various things. I've got some lessons on my website of like, uh, uh, what is it called? I'm blanking on the name right now. I want to say compound picking, but that's not, not it. Uh, where you can like use, it also happens on guitar where you're using your, your pick as one, but then I'm also using my mi middle finger to kind of, get some double stops two strings apart so I, I can skip skip over one any given set of strings um but yeah and then you'll see like red M's ankle uh has some wild techniques and uh andy marshall if you look around in the mandolin world jesse mcreynolds you know with his amazing cross picking style um did i hear that it was jesse mcreynolds birthday can't remember is if not today then maybe recently so happy birthday, Jesse. I think in his 90s and still picking strong. Lewis says, I also played Ola Bell's Undone in Sorrow and My Epitaph, both great songs. Uh, oh, nice, at, at the at the session, or the, the multi-genre jam. Excellent. That's great. Yeah, so good to be out and playing with folks. 
Yeah, Tabletit. I used Tabletit for a long time when I was first playing, mostly to like kind of learn. There's some great Tabletit tune archives, formerly hosted by Mandozine, now on the Mandolin Cafe. Um, I used a lot of Tabletit. Um, and I think there is a free version, but if you want to write tunes out yourself and save them, at least last time I used it, um, you had to buy it. But you could sort of like read, you could open other people's Tabletit files for free. Have you had much experience with Scandinavian Scandinavian Navian music? Yes, I love Scandinavian music. Um, growing up in Maine, there's a lot of different traditional music um, cultures that have sort of like ended up in Maine. You have Irish music from Boston uh, historically coming up into Maine. You have uh, music from Quebec coming down into Maine and French Canadian music traditions. And then there are some long-standing uh, Scandinavian populations, Finnish, Norwegian, Swedish, uh, in in Maine as well. And then you have like old time and bluegrass, um, kind of folk revival style stuff coming up, kind of a wider spread um, musical awakening that made its way into Maine in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, and then English tunes. and It's, it's kind of, Maine gets everything. And that's like a... Like Lewis was saying when he, when he went to like a multi-genre session, that's sort of, that's my home turf because I grew up in Maine and that's what everybody does. So I grew up going to and playing for contra dances where you'll play an Irish tune with an old time, like in a set with an old time tune. And then you'll play a hombo or a polska or a shottish at the break. And then, um, well, it's just kind of all over the place and you'll play. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of everything. So, um... A combination of being around some of the Scandinavian uh, communities in Maine, as well as I've had a lot of friends who have gone to Sweden and really dived deeply into the Swedish tradition. Noah Fishman, who makes a um, regular appearance, not as regular as it should be, I should get him back on here. Uh, we did an album called Fine Times, where we actually play some Swedish tunes, I think. Can't totally remember, but uh, uh, he's spent time in Sweden learning... Uh, diving into Swedish music. I've been to Sweden. I didn't learn any music while I was there, really. Um, or I wasn't studying Swedish music at the time. But I picked up a lot of Swedish music from my friends uh, who play that kind of music in the area. And I, I love it. It's very fun. It's very different, too. It's a, a, a different, totally different thing than Irish or Quebec tunes or anything. Nice. Jim says he found an app called Speed Changer. I haven't heard of that one, to listen to MP3s that are too fast. Yep, there's a couple different ones. Uh, there's Amazing Slow Downer, there's Transcribe, both of which are paid. There's also a great website called ToonTranscriber.com, where you can um, upload any MP3 that's on your computer into it and then slow it down. It's a nice free option. And then there's always the gear in the bottom right-hand corner of the video to slow down YouTube videos. I use all of those regularly. There's a great tune called Boss Pell Eric's Brodpolska. Oh, nice. Yeah, Molly's been playing some Swedish tunes. Um, gotta look that one up. Is that... Uh, I, I can't remember, but I'll look at, I'm not so great with the names of the Swedish tunes. Often, I'm more likely to know the melody than the <clears throat> than the tune itself. <laughs> All right, Jim wants a a Mando lessons bobblehead. <laughs> I will look into that. <laughs> I don't think that will ever happen, but you never know. Maybe some April Fools, just for one day. Yeah, Bruce is also, Bruce Molsky is a great uh, Scandinavian Swedish fiddle player and plays uh, Hardanger fiddle as well. Hey, Keith from Kentucky, good to have you here.
and the Josh Sings. Also, welcome. Just catching up with the chat for a second. Oh, nice. Finger picking on octave mandolin on YouTube. That's fun. Uncle Bobby says he went to a luthier and one of the techs started to tap out a tear. Oh, like, like this kind of like electric guitar tap style. That would be interesting. Maine is great. I love it. I can't wait to get back there. I was gonna. I've teached at a camp every year, Maine Fiddle Camp, that you've probably heard me talk about on this channel if you've been around for a while. Um, and I was planning on being back in Maine to teach at those real live camps in 2020 and 2021, but uh, COVID. So I did them all online, but I'm really looking forward to getting back there soon enough. Nice. So Oscar's from Norway, but has family heritage in Maine. Very cool. Yeah, there's a Norway Maine. There's a New Sweden Maine. There's a... I used to play a tiny little contra dance at the Finnish Farmers Hall in... Oh, I'm blanking on the name of the town. Not Monson. Uh, I can't remember right now. It's out of my brain. But yeah, a lot of great Scandinavian communities up there. Oh, nice. So James says he got some friends who went up and stayed with Joe Walsh, who's in Portland at the moment. Uh... Yeah, Portland's a great plot, spot. There's a lot of good stuff going on in Portland, Maine. Trolls Polska. That's one of those ones that I can follow, but I can never uh, actually keep it going. Or I can never pull it out on my own. Well, I'll play a tune. Maybe I'll play a Swedish tune, just because we've been talking about Swedish music. Yeah, Lewis knows. Waldo County is the place to be. Uh, that's where Maine Fiddle Camp happens. Or... Might not. I, I guess it is probably moving out of Waldo County because it's moving to a new space next year. Uh, anyway, I'll play a Swedish tune and then let's play a little Banish Misfortune to close out the, out the hour. So get your mandolins out and tuned up if you haven't already. Let's see. What's a good Swedish tune? I'll play uh, a classic Swedish Polska, uh, Eklunda number three. Linda number three, a great Swedish tune. So let's, uh, oh, nice. So Kenneth says, good morning. Uh, good to see you, Kenneth. Thanks for the recent play, uh, play and response. I did, yeah, I did one recently. Uh, I was called like repeat after me. 
uh, as part of the improvisation session. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was super fun. I'm glad you liked it. I should do more. Maybe I should, let me know if I should turn that into like a series where I just like every once in a while do a repeat after me. I think it's super helpful to, at least for me, to kind of break things down, have a short little thing. It's like, here, I'm gonna play this, repeat after me. That's sort of like, you know, how I learn longer tunes, the fiddle tunes, but it also it can be really helpful in, in the short term just to be like, I'm gonna do this. Now you do it. Then I go. Then you do it. Then I go. Then you go. And the nice thing is you can kind of approach that at any level you want. You can either just like, you can use it as like, I'm gonna get every note that he's playing. You can use it as, I'm just gonna try my best and see whatever comes out. You can use it as, hey, I'm gonna like just kind of take inspiration from what you just did and then kind of make up my own thing. You can use it as he went high, I'm like as opposites. It's a great game where you're just like, oh, he went high, I'm gonna go low. He went down, I'm gonna go up, things like that. Um, it's very, uh, very versatile. Cool, Anne thinks that would be a good series. Cool, yeah, I'll, I'll do more of those. All right, so let's play a little bit of Banish Misfortune. A lovely three-part Irish jig with a name that's hard for me to say. Banish Misfortune makes my mouth move a lot. So let's see if I can play this better than uh, when I did at the beginning of the hour. See what comes out. So the way these work is we'll pass it back and forth a couple times here. I'll play the melody. You can back me up on the chords or you can do whatever you want. I can't hear you. Neither can anybody else. So you can play along with me melody the whole time. You can play chords the whole time. I don't really care what you do as long as you're having fun and trying to challenge yourself a little bit. Um, so um, we'll play it through. I'll play the melody. You play chords. Then we'll swap. I'll play the chords while you play the melody. Again, it's a three-part tune, kind of a notey one, but uh, I won't go too fast. And if you need to slow it down, uh, you can always, once the video has uh, processed through YouTube, this live stream, then uh, you can slow it down with a little gear in the corner and come back to it. Uh, you can also learn the tune. I've got lessons over at mandolessons.com and here on YouTube. Cool. Nice, Chris Howes, he's awesome, yeah. I, I've never met him, but uh, I know his stuff. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> what is this tune called? Banish Misfortune. One, two, here we go. Four, five, six, B part. B2 
far. the melody one more time. A2. Misfortune. I haven't played that tune in a very long time. I should have practiced up over the week, but there you go. Time gets away from me. All right, and Betsy kindly reminded us that we were also talking about the tune Flowers of Edinburgh. Uh, I can't remember how it goes right now, but it's a good tune. <laughs> uh, That's Temperance Reel. Is that related? Anyway, I'm not going to try to play it right now because my brain's all boggled up. But it's a great tune. I'll definitely know how to do it next week because I'm going to practice. And I hope you all do too. <laughs> we can hold each other accountable. Uh, in any case, thanks so much for hanging out this week. Let's do Flowers of Edinburgh next week is the jam tune. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you all for the support. Thank you for the super chats the PayPal donations, thanks to all the patrons that show up every week and support me that way. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you all. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and uh, keep picking a lot of mandolin. The weather's getting nice. See you soon. <laughs>